David Badil is feeling giddy and full of excitement when we meet him, with the opening night of his new stand, Up Tour that very evening. The 90s comedy icon has enjoyed some wild times on the road in the past, but now it seems it's the far more simple pleasures in life that get his juices flowing. I'm going to Scarborough. He beams. I love visiting the local towns and popping in shops and having lovely chats with people. There was much more debauchery when was younger, let me tell. You. He pauses. Now it's straight back to bed and excited to see the next town. I visited Workington on my last tour and love gigs in more remote areas of the country, because the folk feel happy that you've turned up. Felt really lovely sense of appreciation. Then there is flicker of concern. But please don't make that sound patronizing. Don't mean it that way in the slightest. It's fitting that David is worried about offending anyone, as his new stand, Up Show, is all about his experiences with internet trolls. Finding fame in the early 90s, he shared flat with fellow comic Frank Skinner and the pair went on to have raucous time, an unlikely stand, out moment being that little football anthem Three Lions, where, without any social media or easily accessible internet, they were able to enjoy their career without selfies and camera phones. Now, Badil finds the world of Twitter minefield, despite having 650, 000 followers, but at least it's given him new comedy content. Social media is just how we live now, and whether you like it or not, everyone is shouting at each other online and no effort is made to discover and talk about truth in complex way because everyone is taking sides, he sighs. Having performed Stand, Up for 30 years, we wonder if David finds social media more tricky because he's used to being heckled in real life. Exactly. He laughs. But you'd think that would teach me the right way to act. This tour is bit of guide on the right way to be with Vile. Troll, but don't always follow my own advice, he smiles. Sometimes can't help it. Someone tweeted me and said the only thing they wanted to read about me would be my obituary. Got upset about that, he admits. So replied saying, at least I'll get one. Obituaries aside, David's had successful career that's enabled him to make people laugh, be pop star, actor, author and TV presenter. At the height of his fame, he and Skinner were not only hosting their own show, but presenting high-profile events and even performing for the Queen. But he'd never watch any of his work back. Oh no, he says, laughing, I watch other people's stand-up comedy on YouTube, he explains. Clearly big kid at heart, David goes on to tell us how he's trying to break few of his childlike habits. For years I've read a lot of fiction, so I'm determined to start enjoying non-fiction, and to stop watching cartoons, he laughs. My new love is virtual reality device use almost every day. Play games on it, but my favorite feature is called Beach in Bali. And that's exactly what it is, its point of view of being on gorgeous beach. It does feel like you're there, it's brilliant, can't get enough of it. Despite this, David does try to act his age. It's like when you start ordering fish at restaurant even though you don't want it, just because it's the adult choice. So. Watch documentaries because I'm grown, up now. At least I'm learning something too, because it's all true. One of David's more adult ventures is disturbing documentary about people who refuse to believe the Holocaust happened. He had several survivors in his own family, and as this year marks the 75th anniversary of the camp's closures, he felt compelled to study this sinister subject. I've always had dark fascination with Holocaust denial. The fact that since it happened, and while it was happening, forces have tried to undermine one of the most well, documented truths of history seems to me key battleground in the fight between truth and lies, he explains. As the last survivors, including those related to me, begin to pass away, we lose living memory of the Holocaust. I'm so grateful I've been able to explore it in all its difficulty and darkness. Family is important to David and he talks candidly about another difficult element of his life, his father's dementia. I love looking at old pictures of me, my dad and my brother, he smiles, the resemblance is unbelievable. My mother had an affair in the 70s with memorabilia salesmen and was open about it with us all. So now if anyone thinks, are you sure your dad is your real dad? Can show them that picture. He laughs. Although he's at peace with his mum's affair and her death, four years ago, and his dad's illness, it was only recently he tackled barrier between himself and his father. My. Dad is very alpha male 1970s father, David explains. 
I did documentary about his dementia and the director asked me on camera, did your dad ever say he loved you? And laughed and said, no, he would never say something like that. The director asked why and replied jokingly, because he doesn't love us. The camera panned to my dad and he said, that's B-L-L-C-K-S, was incredibly moved, he says sincerely, that's so typical of dad. Even with dementia the closest he'd get to saying he loves me is that, but it meant lot, he smiles. David is married to fellow comedy star Morwina Banks and the pair have two children, Dolly, 19, and Ezra, 16. He says having them is the only thing in his life that's changed him, although, despite bringing up two kids, he's still stuck in some adorable mealtime habits that are fit for schoolboy. I hate change, he tells us, even my food palate is stuck at about age 9, he adds with laugh, I still get excited. About Roundtree's fruit pastilles, shouldn't, it's not helpful to me at my age, as I'm overweight and it is bad, but still think with every meal that have to have pudding, I'm the sort of person that if have meal without pudding it's like sentence without full stop. Despite his funny exterior, David is thoughtful and intelligent, telling us how he is there for his children if they come to him for any advice. I'm no stranger to self, help book, he explains, advice try to pass on to. Them came from book about anxiety, which suffer from, it said, anxiety is an emotion, not mandate. Tell that to myself and others, find it really helpful just thinking that negative emotion is just like happiness, excitement or anything else and it'll pass. It is good mantra for me. Do his kids think he's cool? They teach me what's cool. He exclaims, even when my son was little he'd wake me up at 6 a.m. to watch the amazing world of Gumball which is on Cartoon Network, and gradually thought, he's right, this is hilarious. I, on the other hand, have no shame in liking things that might be deemed, uncool. Love the Carpenters and ABBA, and not in an ironic way. Think the songs are beautiful, melodic, pop tunes. And don't get me started on my obsession with cats, love them. No shame there either. He says, as David gets ready to leave, still excited about the prospect of proper fish and chips and an ice cream in Scarborough, he reflects on how far he's come. It's funny how this has happened to me, he says with smile. I was nearly expelled for making people laugh. We had big school show every year and changed some of the lyrics in the songs to naughty things about the teachers, he says, cringing slightly. They wanted to expel me, but didn't as was going to Cambridge University and it looked good for them on the league tables. And that's where it all began, he says laughing. Now if people come and see me on tour from that school. Even 40 years later they bring it up. They've never been allowed an assembly show since and it's all because of me. He tells us, howling with mirth. We ask him if he'd like to issue public apology. No. He smiles. Look at what I'm doing now. Think it's very important that don't. What do you do on typical Sunday? As little as possible. Consider Sunday to be buffer zone between the weekend and the week, and so most of my time is spent doing as little as possible to try. And extend the time between waking up and realizing, oh God, it's nearly Monday. What would be your perfect Sunday? One that went on forever. Lie, in or up with the lark. I like the idea of lie, in and used to very much have lie, in, but I've found one of the many not, so, joyous things about getting older is that can't sleep late like used to, wouldn't say was up with the lark, but I'm probably up before 10, hungover or fresh as daisy. I'm never hungover as don't drink anymore. However I'd be hard pushed to describe myself as fresh as daisy either, I'm pretty groggy and headache, why and nauseous on waking, so it occurs to me may as well get plastered the night before, muesli or fry, up, well, as my twitter followers know, like full english breakfast, when was touring last time, began posting pics of them online, and seemed to be having one every day, which was, as when you're staying in hotels in this country, that's always available for breakfast and find it, really hard to say no to it, I am touring again, and having them again lot, although trying my best not to, as I'd like to eat less meat, which means shouldn't really have them on Sunday as well. But quite often still do. There's particular joy in the architecture of fry, up, the placing of the beans to form breakwater between them and the eggs etc.